Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the sixth video in the My Images Core Data series. In the first five videos of this series, we saved our images to the application's documents directory. And I've had many requests to update this to show you how you can store your images as data right within the core data model. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. We'll add a new image attribute to our core data model and create a value transformer so we can easily transform our data into a UI image when reading and back to data when adding or updating our images. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. And since the continuation from the previous five videos, if you've been following along, feel free to continue on from your own project. If you're just landing on this video or no longer have your project, you can download the completed project from video 5. The link is in the description. I do recommend that you watch the videos, however, as you can get a better understanding of how the application was built and its functions. So this is how it works right now. As you can see, I currently have two images stored in my application and displayed in this grid view. As I print out the path to the documents directory in the console when I run the application, we can select that path and then right click and choose services and then open. If you run this service, it'll open the application's documents directory and show you that you have those two images stored there. The information about the images is stored in core data with the ID pointing to the corresponding image. As I said, we want not to store the images here, but rather as data in a core data attribute. So to make things easier to deal with and be less confusing, I'm going to remove any images currently in the app. The first thing that we'll need then is a new attribute for our entity in our data model. So open it from the project navigator. With the My Image Entity selected, tap on the plus button in the attribute section and add a new entry and call it image. Specify that the type here be transformable. Now if you click off the entity and then back on again, you'll see that the image attribute gets stored alphabetically. If we select the attribute and open the attributes inspector, we can see that it's an optional transformable type. This is going to require a value transformer that will take whatever values we have and transform them into a specific type before they get inserted into the database and before they get read. For us, this is going to be a UI image so that the custom class field here, we can specify that this is what we want, a UI image. If we build, we get an error. Because the underlying My Image plus Core Data Properties class that is created can't find that type, and that's an optional UI image. Notice that this file here that we can find is automatically generated by Xcode and should not be edited, so we can't import UIKit here. What we'll need to do is replicate this file so that we can update it. Well, there's an easy way to do this. For the entity, we no longer use the class definition code gen. So back in the data model, select the my image entity and then switch the code gen from class definition to manual slash none. Then with the model file open, you can choose from the editor menu, create NS managed object subclass. Well, we only have one data model, so we can make sure that it's checked, and then click on Next. And then this will list all the entities that you might have in your project. Most of them probably won't need any modifications, but ours does. So make sure that this one is checked and any other ones that you might have are unchecked. And then click on Next. When you get the opportunity to save, I suggest that you navigate in the top pane into your core data folder. And then for the group, make sure you drill down and select Core Data. Then click on Create, and this will create two files in your Core Data folder, one named My Image Plus Core Data Properties, and this is the same auto-generated file, but this time we have absolute control over it. 
So we'll be able to import UI kit. Then there's another file called my image plus core data class, but we'll not be touching it. We'll just add that import here to UI kit and build. The errors go away, but we still get warnings that we'll need to deal with. Well, now that we are manually generating our files, if you ever have to add or remove attributes for this entity, you'll have to add and remove the properties yourself or regenerate the file. And the issue with this is that if you've made any modifications like we have just done, you'll have to do those again. Now, our own existing extension that we created is not touched, but we will have to update it as we no longer will be fetching our image from the documents directory. So if there is one stored in that image attribute, it will display it. Then it will display it after we've created our transformer. Otherwise, if it fails to transform or if we have no image, remember it's optional, we we'll want to display our placeholder photo image. So we can change the computed UI image property to reflect that. Well, a value transformer can take any type as input and return a value of a different type. So in our case, we'll be transforming a UI image to a NS data to store in our database when we write to it, and then reverse the process by transforming the data to a UI image once it's read. Within the core data folder, create a new file and call it UI Image Transformer. Inside there, change the import to UI Kit. Create a new class called UI Image Transformer and make sure that it conforms to the Value Transformer protocol. Well, unlike other protocols, no errors or fix recommendations are shown. So there are no specific requirements for this transformer. However, if I option click on the value transformer, you'll get the documentation summary and discussion. And it's in this discussion that we find that we will need two functions. Transform value method to transform our UI image into data. And the reverse transform value if we want to read that data and convert it back to an image. Now within this class, if you just type transform value, we get auto completion and an override function gets created for you. It receives some kind of optional value that can be any type and returns some other optional type. Well, we want to only transform a UI image. So we can use a guard check here to make sure that we are getting that. Else, we'll return nil. Next, we use an NS keyed archive classes archive data class method. And this will ask us for our root object, which is an image, and we set requiring secure coding to true. Now this may fail, so we'll need a try, and we'll need to embed it in a do catch block. If it's successful, then we'll have the data and we can just return it. If it fails, we'll catch it and return nil. For the reverse process then, we saw that the value transformer protocol needs a reverse transform value method, and that's like its counterpart. It receives the value that is an optional type and then returns another optional type of any object. Well, this time we'll need to ensure that the value we get back is data else we'll return nil. So we'll use a guard check for that. If we're successful then, we can form our image by trying to use the NS keyed unarchiver classes unarchived object class method, where we can specify the type of class, which is a UI image dot self, from the data that we received. And this too may fail, so we'll again need a try and enclose it in a do catch block. If it fails, we catch the error and we'll return nil. If successful, we can just return the image. We still have one more thing to do, and that's to register this transformer so that core data will be able to find it. So within the UI image transformer class, we'll create a static name property that is an NS value transformer name. 
and it requires a raw value. And we'll just specify the same as the name of our class as a string. Then we can create a static function that we'll call register. In the body of this function, we'll access the value transformers classes function called set value transformer and provide it with a new instance of the UI image transformer for the name that we just created. And then in our my images container class, before we create the persistent container in the initializer, we can call that static function to register our transformer. Well, now that we have the UI image transformer completed, we can return to our core data model and specify that class in the transformer field for the image attribute of our entity. When we build now, all warnings disappear. Well, we no longer need to use the file manager to load and save our images. So we need to update our image form view where we are doing that. So let's check where we have those file manager functions being used now. In the button where we check to see if we are updating an image in the else clause, we can comment out that save image function now. However, at the same time, we need to, before saving, set the image property of the new image to our view model's UI image. And it'll get transformed into data and saved. We'll check the update image function in just a minute. But in further on here where we have our toolbar button with the trash icon, I can comment out the call to delete the image because we won't have one. Now then in the update image function, we'll no longer need that file manager function here, but we will need to set the selected image images property to the view models UI image. Now there's one more call to the file manager function in the alert with the message field that will create an attachment for sharing our JSON. But we're going to still need that function because that one deals with the zipped attachments that's used when we share images. We'll get to that in just a minute. But let's test where we are. I'm going to run the application now in the simulator and I'm going to add a couple of images. And I'm going to make sure that each time I specify some values in one or more of the form fields so that I'm able to save. Well, if I stop and run the application again, we see that the images have been stored in core data. But are they also stored in the documents directory? Well, let's check. I still am printing out the location of that documents directory I can right click on, choose services and open, and then run that to open the documents directory. And you can see it's empty. Perfect. Well, so far so good. But when we share our photos, we no longer have that image in the documents directory that we can zip up and share via that email attachment. This means that when we decide to share an image and the metadata that we have added with it, we will need to first temporarily save the image to the documents directory, zip it up, and then delete the image as we attach the zip file to the email. Conversely, when we restore an image, we'll need to save that image to the documents directory as before, assign it to the UI image property of the new or updated object, and then subsequently delete it from the documents directory. So first in the share services class, since we will be dealing with UI images, we'll change the import to UI kit. And then in the save my image function, we'll now need an additional parameter for a UI image. Then we'll need to save that image to the documents directory. And we can do that right after saving the JSON by calling the file managers save image function using the codable image ID property and the UI image. And then we go and zip the files. And right after we zip up the files, we'll need to delete that image because we won't need it anymore. So we can do that by trying to call the file managers 
remove item method at the image URL. It's in image form view where we actually call this function as an action in our OK button. So we'll need to update the call to this function to pass in the view model's UI image. Well, that handles the sharing of an image via an attachment. When we restore an image, it'll be coming to us exactly as it always had, with JSON and an image, so our app's entry point call to restore will still be the same. The restore function in the shared service class will unzip and store the image in that documents directory and create a quotable image object there as well that we monitor for changes in our grid view. So let's go to our My Images grid view and we see that there is that on change of the share service quotable image object and the image and the JSON codable object will either be a new one or an update to an existing one. So we have two functions that we're going to have to update. Let's deal with restoring first. Well, the decoding of the object to create our new my image object is fine. That's not changing. But we still have to add the image to the my image property. First, we'll create a property for the URL, and it'll be at our URL documents directory by appending the path of the JPEG with the quotable image ID. After we've created that my image object then, we get data from that URL and we can see if it's actually a UI image. If it is, we can assign that UI image to the new images image property. And then once it's been assigned, we no longer need that image in the documents directory, so we can try again to call the file manager's remove item at that image URL. Then finally, in the update image info function, where it's an update to an existing my image, the JSON decoding again is still just fine, but we'll have to do the same thing that we did in our other function. We'll need to create that image URL to represent the path to that image. And then, as above, we'll try to decode the data from that URL. And if we can form a UI image from that data, this time we'll assign it to the existing my image image property. And then again, after saving, we can remove the image from the documents directory. That's it. So let's test. But I'm going to need two devices that I can send and receive email to. So I've installed that same application on my phone on the left and my test device on the right. Notice that my test device has three unread messages or emails right now. If I open the application on my phone on the left, I see I have three images in my app. I open it on the right, my test device, it has none. So on my phone on the left, I want to share this photo of my dog. So I'm going to tap on it, and I'll tap on the share button. And I have to give it my name, so the receiver knows who got it from within their app. And then I'm presented with a mail form so that I can send a message to someone else, and I'll send it to my test phone using my test phone's email address and I'll give it a subject. Notice the zipped archive attachment is already there with the My Image extension that we've registered. So I'll send this message. And then over on my test device now, let me exit to the home screen, and I see that I now have four unread messages. If I open up my mail app, I see the most recent one is from me. So let me open it and I see that attachment is loaded. I can tap on it, and up pops the share sheet, with one of the options being the My Image app to open that attachment in. Well, I tap on it, and the app opens, and inserts my new image. It's exactly what I want. As you can see, as I open this on both of these applications, on both of these phones, the corresponding attributes from the core data entity have been inserted as well. Well, that completes this video, and I hope you've enjoyed learning something that you can use in your own projects.
If you've liked this video, please tap the thumbs up button and leave a comment. And be sure to subscribe to my channel to get notifications of new videos. I have one more to go in this series, and we'll connect our core data to CloudKit so that we can use our app on multiple devices and have the images synchronized between them, yet still maintaining all of the other functionality, including sharing. Thanks for watching.